Welcome back to Something Awesome. I'm Zedavaker. We continue our story with uh, Let's Play Kanawa Shogo Act 2, Hanako's Castling. And there was a hammering noise at the beginning of this. So, pretend there's hammering. And, um, uh... The hammering of a fist against the door feels like a nail being pounded into my head. Once, twice, three times. I let out a long, annoyed breath and bear with it while pressing my eyelids shut, fervently hoping for whoever it is to just go away. I feel pretty damn awful. My face feels like it's cast out of my out of the out of lead. My arms feel heavy, and I feel quite queasy. It's been like this since I woke up half an hour ago, and I can't summon the energy to pick myself up out of bed. So, this is what they call a hangover. I wonder if perhaps this is the best testament for teenagers who desperately want to try drinking as a way to feel like an adult, considering how unpleasant this is. It's not something I want to repeat. A series of thumps rings out again, rever reverberating around the small room. I wish they'd just give up already. I have no intentions of getting out of bed for them. Seconds pass, turning to minutes. Just no more knocks are coming from the door. Whoever it is, must have left. Thank goodness. Looking to my clock, the time when I really should think about getting dressed and ready for class is approaching. I don't think I can manage, man, manage it though. I hate cutting class, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get much done at this rate. I can tell I look like a mess without needing to look in the mirror to confirm it too. The morning rush is giving me enough time to stand outside the classroom for a little while without looking too suspicious. I hope that Muto doesn't ask any awkward questions about my not attending class yesterday. I was sick, and that much is true. It's just the reasons for it that I had to hide. Confidence I can get by with a technical omission of certain truths, I stride into the classroom doing my best to appear normal. The instant I open the door and take a single step in, I can feel a dozen eyes looking at me. There is no way I'm imagining this. They're not even making any attempts to hide it. My eyes take a quick sweep around the classroom and I spot Hanako. We make eye contact momentarily before she looks down and stares very hard at her desk. Did she spill the beans? Muto may be okay as far as teachers go, but underage drinking on campus is not exactly something that would be taken lightly. I look to him with some trepidation. Feeling better today? Yeah, thank you. He motioned for me to take my seat, my legs feeling like sticks as they carry me there. This is going to be a long day. As soon as the lunch bell rings, I'm on the way to Hanako's desk to ask her what's going on. Hanako, did you tell? She looks at me and shakes her head. That's a big relief. It's just... Just? Well, hello there, Hit-chan! It's nice to see you again today! I grimace and turn towards the unmistakable <sighs> voices coming from behind me. That was way too a beat a tone of voice to feel comfortable, even for Misha. Misha's happy smile is nothing out of the usual. She's doing this though, it's a very bad sign. The one she wears has become notched into my brain as her. I've got you... I have got you seven ways from Sunday. Smile. Hi, Shizun. Misha. You, uh, you look happy to see me. Shizun face. Not feeling well yesterday, Hit-chan? No, no, I wasn't. But I'm feeling better now, at least. Shizun face. That's good to know, Hit-chan. Why do I get the feeling that Shizune is leading me into a trap? You sound like you're not being completely serious. Shizune face. Oh no, Hechan, we're genuinely pleased that you're all better now. Shizune face. Shizune is positively overflowing with happiness. There's only one reason why she would be like this. Oh no. In fact, we're quite worried about you after all. You and Hanukkah Lily were absent from class on the same day. Yep, she's got us. 
so thoroughly that all I can do is sigh in defeat. Uh, I guess you have your own theories about this. Could you just kind of not tell anyone? It's a bit late for that, Hitchin. I suppose she's right. Considering the looks I got as I entered class, still, things only seem to be at the level of vague suspicion rather than outright accusations, so we'll probably be fine. Hanako's face sinks a little further. Such attention is troublesome enough for me, let alone her. Going by Suzine and Misha's reactions, I think they noticed this as well. She's in face. The only reason why we're giving you such a hard time is that you ignored us yesterday morning. Yesterday morning? It takes a little while, a while to rec recollect what happened then, given the haze induced by the generally awful state I was in at the time. Oh, right. The knocking. And that was you two? Shazoon face. It was, and you left us there for ages. We, after we'd taken all the effort of coming up to your dormitory early in the morning. Sorry, uh, I was having a, a problem with nausea? A problem with nausea. They're not buying it. I can't blame them. Shizune's head drops in resignation before she reaches into her pocket. Something white and yellow can be seen sticking out a little, and as she pulls it out, it turns out to be an envelope with very bright decorations on it. She, since she points it toward me, I duly take it. This is what we we're trying to give, trying so hard to give to you, Hitchan. You don't check your... I tune out the sound of Misha's voice as my eyes register what's written on the envelope. Iwakana. Iwakana. I stare at the envelope for a moment before suddenly remembering that there are people around me. There's a very strange, somewhat invasive feeling about their expressions. I kind of want to be alone right now. Iwan? I wanna... I wanna go? It's nothing. Thank you for bringing me this, you too. I should think so, after what we went through to get it to you. I step back and say my goodbyes. Nisha, they actually pause even as I go out the door. But Suzune and Hanako remain very visibly curious about my reaction. I hope they won't interrogate me on this later. The smell of the garden is, as always, a very pleasant sensation. Some of the most visible signs of how well funded the school is, aside from its sheer size, are the spas and of and conditions of the grounds. A good number of students can be seen eating lunch, chattering, and playing on the bright green lawns. Even some of the staff is enjoying the summer here, keeping watch over the students and and idly walking along the long concrete paths. I've never seen a site like this in my hometown, home city. On excursions, maybe, but certainly never in school or anywhere near where I lived. Even though the bench I sit on to read is warmer, thanks to the summer sun, summertime sun, reminding me of why I haven't worn the school blazer even, not even once. Concerning this, the sunflower and splashes of vibrant yellow coloring adorning the paper are quite appropriate for the time, if only the words written on it were as well. Here I was, thinking I'd manage to get over her, when this troublesome thing shows up. Her handwriting looks vaguely familiar at best, and only now that I see it again, I remember that she used to write in pink pen a lot. She was always very grin girly, for lack of a better term. But she was also quite fragile. I never knew if I liked this aspect of her or not, though with the arrival of this letter, that question seemed to have become largely moot. The letter begins with not much more than an update of the state of things going on with her life. My old class had a good start to the summer school year. Many are anxious about the exams that will be coming up in the future, etc. But it tends on a but it ends on a very personal, if brief note. It feels a bit like she wrote most of the letter just to try and soften the blow from the ending. I wanted to express somehow my feelings, but the right words didn't come to me. I couldn't say anything to comfort you. I'm really sorry for not being able to support you when it mattered the most. 
Even though I like you so much. At least now, finally, I can be more honest. If I could go back to those quiet days in February and March, I'd tell you not to give back, give up on yourself. That's what I would say. Maybe you wouldn't have drifted so far away if I had just said something. I hope you managed to get back on your own feet on your own. Now that the distance between us is also physical, it also feels more final, somehow. I wonder if we will ever meet again. Perhaps it's the best if we don't. Still, if you would like to correspond with me, by all means, write me back. I'd very much like to hear about your new school and how you're doing. I wish you all the best. Sincerely, I want to call. And so that's that. Our relationship is over. Nice, neat, and tidy, with no ambiguity. I hadn't held on to many, any illusions that it could ever begin anew. The last time she visited me, neither of us said a thing. Except for this one word she said as she left for the last time, goodbye. Be that as it may, this feels more final. The capstone on the experiment that both of us tried and failed at. A loud shout draws my eyes away from the letter. Yay. It's just some student horsing around, with one of the teachers standing nearby coming over to talk to them. Are you okay? A tentative voice comes from my side. For a moment, I assume it to be Hanako, but it's actually Yuko. Oh, hello Yuko. I thought you'd be in the library. She gives a cheerful smile on one quite fitting in the atmosphere and flourishes the empty wrapper of a roll in her hand. She must have, have something else covering for her while she grabs something to eat. It reminds me that I haven't had anything to eat yet. I don't feel hungry though, and skipping one lunch won't hurt. Can I never sit here? <laughs> sure, go ahead. I quickly slide the letter back into its envelope, slipping it inside my bag propped against the side of the bench as Yuko takes a seat. She drops the wrapper into a bin beside us. Without much else to do, I lean back and take what hmm. enjoyment I can from the sun. Slightly reflecting on the letter. The lush lawns, the clear blue skies, everything looks so different from the way it did back then. Even the school's surroundings, from the hills it's on to the woods around it, are completely opposite to the urban scenery I remember. Maybe this is what it's like to feel homesick. Then again, it's not an outright bad sensation. The feel of the area around Yamaku, while very different, is also nice. I think I could get used to it. Hey, he saw. Yeah? You didn't answer my question from before. I wasn't going to say anything, but you still look troubled. If you don't want to say anything, though, that's okay. I don't mind at all. I'm so, so sorry for asking something strange like that. <laughs> I don't mind. It's just... I got a letter from someone I knew before I came to Yamaku. It made me think about some things. I thought I managed to get most of the pe most of the problems that they that my accident caused, but now I'm not really so sure. I kind of wish I'd never seen it. I don't think that's good, Hisao. When my boyfriend left me, he did so very suddenly and never let me know why. At first, I was very depressed about it, but I decided to forgive him. You forgave him? <laughs> Couldn't he at least talk properly with you about it? He was always one of those people that found it difficult to come close to others. In the end, I decided that I fell in love with him for, the, for a reason. He was a good person, and if I didn't think that I had been in his position, I would probably have just found it as hard to try and talk to him. I don't really see the connections to the letter I got. I mean that, um, how should I put this? It must have been very hard for the person to send that letter. If, and if they did, I think they must have thought very hard about exactly what to say. Yonako imagined, managed to write this letter and bring a final close to our relationship, something that I'd never managed to do. Whereas here I am, trying to protect and help Hanako as best I can, especially with Lily leaving for a while, and I'm not even able to deal with my own problems. Does that make sense? 
She's taking my non-response and furrowed bro as doubt. She really reads faces too much, just like a certain other person. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. The letter was just kind of a shock, really. I don't think I tried to fool myself into thinking that my life was set when it came into Yamaku. But now I'm suddenly aware that it didn't. I'm at a bit of a loss now about how to deal with these feelings. I think that's something I can't really help you with. Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. I think being able to talk with you helped me out. Help me get things sorted out a bit better in my head. So thank you anyway. She nods and smiles sweetly. Yuko is a nice girl. So it's a shame she's so highly strung so often. The school bell ringing our stars as both. Ah! I was supposed to be back before the bell! <laughs> Oops. She jumps off the bench and almost races out without a second word, but turns on her heel as she remembers she was talking to me just now. I'll see you later, Hiso. Cheer up, okay? I'll try to. Thanks, Yuko. With a quick bow, Yuko takes her place and leaves her rush to the library. Her flight catches the curious eyes of a few passing students who are enthusiastically trudging back to their classes after their fun. Reluctantly standing from the bench, I dust myself off and join them. Even while I walk through the garden, gardens back to the main building, the thought of the letter in my bag doesn't stray far from my mind. I hope you guys liked this episode. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave your comments below. Subscribe to see the rest of the story. And until next time, folks, see you guys later. Good night.